Happy New Year, my lovely friends, and uh, yeah, Merry Christmas. It's no, it's a little bit late, but since I've not uploaded video last week, it's every two weeks here. I want to wish you Merry Christmas and I want to wish you a Happy New Year and uh, cheers to all of you. I hope you had a wonderful holidays and I hope you had a fantastic family time and a good kind of a relax before the start of 2024. So let's have a sip for that. Mm. I'm having a wonderful spice rum because to, today we're going to use it in the recipe. So I said, why not to pour one and also say a massive, huge thank you to everybody who subscribed to the channel so far. We hit the 500 mark, which is required from YouTube. Uh, we keep uploading videos on a regular basis. Now it's only left to reach the watch time. And I'm pretty sure we're going to do it because so far it's been fantastic and I can see most of you enjoying the content and I hope to bring more and more interesting videos for you so you can stay here, entertain, learn something and use all these wonderful recipes and tricks and tips which I'm showing you here and most important mixology hacks to your cocktails at home or the body working. Now today, today we're gonna do a winter spice syrup, still winter. Festive season it's over, but doesn't matter. Winter's still here and we're still enjoying nice and wintry cocktails. But why don't we make our own winter syrup? As we know, syrups is basically a flavor, a water, sugar. It's more concentrate on sugar and how that's how you create a syrup. But today, we're changing things and we're breaking rules. Why? Because we're going to use alcohol. Yes, you hear me right. First of all, this syrup is entirely created to be used in cocktails. So there's no any reason why we can use alcohol because it will be used in a cocktail. So we use spirits in the cocktails. So the syrup can be a little boozy. It will be just enough to preserve the syrup for longer and also help you extract all the flavors of the ingredients which I'm going to use today. So, uh, it's a quite a long list of things you need for this syrup. Uh, it's look like a quite a long list, but it's widely available. It's absolutely fine. You can find everything no matter where you live. Or I hope at least you can do that. So first of all, before I start with the syrup, I'm going to walk you through the ingredients. Now I start writing a little black book here and I'm thinking every video is going to be put in a small writing format and at some point I'll be releasing maybe a digital copy of every recipe and mixology hack which I filmed for you so you can download it. So stay tuned. If you're new to the channel make sure to subscribe because you don't want to miss this. Uh, I don't plan selling it at the moment. It will be strictly for subscribers who will probably join the Patreon or a Discord forum. I don't know yet how it's going to be kind of organized, but I'm working on it. So I'll let you know when I have more clear picture. Now, what we need today, ground cloves, ground all spices, ground nutmeg, ground ginger, and you're gonna need a one star anise, a single one, but not ground. We're just gonna break it because in my personal opinion, when you get ground star anise, it's expired very quick if you don't use it regularly, but when it's full, it can stay for longer and preserve the flavor for longer and the aromas. Also, you'll be needing a spice rum. Today, I'll be using a old J spice rum. The reason why I'm using the OJ Spice Rum because it's very rich on vanilla. Now, this is here totally personal preference. If you have uh, your favorite Spice Rum, which have a different flavor profile, use it. That, it's absolutely really up to you guys because for me, that's the flavor which I'm after. But for you, you may like a different Spice Rum, the different uh, flavor profile. So use it, okay? There's no particular rum here apart from being spiced rum. Okay. We'll be needing also one orange, 
some light muscovado sugar, no dark, light, no any other sugar. It needs to be muscovado because it's rich, it's creamy, it's gonna make the syrup very nice, thick, creamy, velvety, just perfect. Okay, you'll be needing 100 ml of a spice rum, 200 ml of water, of course you need a bottle to bottle the syrup, and you need a pan where we're gonna make the syrup, a uh, funnel, and very important, electronic scale, which you can use for big measurements, like when you measure the sugar, or any other fruits or something bigger, and of course, a micro scale, which is precise to 0.01 gram, okay? This is what we're using to get all the spices ready for you. Now I made it a little bit easier, instead of going one at a time to measure, I've already prepared the spices. Here is my single star anise, just here. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna break it. It doesn't need to be grounded, like I say, just a little break to release the flavor. Oh, fabulous. And all these spices is gonna go on the pan for a quick roast, very quick roast. You don't wanna burn it, you just want a, a quick roast to release the flavors. Now here it's coming the part of the alcohol. Why are we using a spirit? There's a many different articles and many people saying different things, but no matter what people say, from my personal experience, extracting flavor from spices, the best way to do it is to use alcohol. Now, if you obviously want to do a clear syrup without any alcohol inside, without any ABV, you have to use water. But using water, you're gonna lose some of the flavors. No matter what you try, you will lose some of the flavors. The only way possible to preserve the whole flavor is if you're using vacuum bag and doing it on a hot water bath with a sous vide or anything which can be preserved under vacuum, okay? This way you're not gonna have any loss of the flavor of the water, everything's gonna stay inside. However, if you don't have at home and you just boil like a spices with the water on the stove in an open pan or whatever you do, you're never gonna get the 100% or at least enough concentrate flavor as you do from mixing the spices with alcohol. It's simple as that. Now, some people may say I'm not correct, but hey, try, prove me wrong, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. So we have our spices, we have the pan ready, we need to squeeze the orange juice and we need to get the peels ready before that because we're going to use the orange juice as well. One last thing I forgot to say, you need the peeler, okay? Because you need to get the zest from the orange. It really doesn't matter how you're gonna zest it. For me, I prefer to do it this way. So I have like a small zest because this is gonna go again in the mixture for the syrup. Uh, if you do one long zest, I don't know, it may be difficult to kind of mix it inside, but again, personal preference. There you go, the zest is ready. So I'm just gonna put this on the side. And I need to squeeze this orange, okay? Now here it's coming my ooh, retro machine to squeeze the orange, and I'm gonna need a glass, of course. If any of you is interested, by the way, uh, you can't even see me here. Yeah, if any of, one, it, any of you is interested of comparing different uh, machines or different techniques to squeeze citrus, I have on Just Shake or Steer a video which I made over a year ago, I compare a few different ways to squeeze lemons or oranges and obviously give you the idea which one takes the most of the juice of any citrus. So I'm gonna leave a card here and link in the description. If you wanna watch it and if you are kind of uh, wondering what should I buy, should I buy electric, should I buy handheld, should I buy one of these, go and watch the video and make your choice. 
because I went through all of them and basically give you the idea what's the best to buy. Right, let's squeeze this orange. So you need one orange, it doesn't matter size, whatever size you have. But we're just gonna have to squeeze it nicely. There you go. Perfect. One down, half down, other half to go. Uh, again, thank you so much, everyone. Seriously, uh, it means a lot to me. I've started this channel kind of like a with experiment. I wasn't sure if it's gonna go well or I'm gonna be able to kind of feed videos on a regular basis. It was it was tough start, but. I manage and I'm happy that we keep going and yeah, and you're here supporting. Okay, now I did everything fantastic apart from one thing. Too much preparation and you always forget something. This kind of a juice squeezer or whatever you want to call it, it's very messy. So what I need to do is grab a tissue and I put on the floor because there will be like a few drops and I don't want to be sticky on the floor. So there you go, that's what we have, that's all the orange juice we need. Now we're gonna put our noisy friend here, directly on boiling setting because I want to roast the spices very quick. You need to be around, please don't put anything in the pan and just disappear because if you burn the spices, game over you need to start again there you go you see it's already smoking so i because it's very strong oh my gosh that smells fantastic just give them a quick steer put it back again to warm up and be ready to add your orange juice wonderful now we can go down. Perfect. This is gonna be a fairly quick video, I hope, because it's not much cooking to go, but you need to keep it for a moment, kind of a simmer for probably five minutes. So the orange juice is inside and it's time to put our spice rum as well. Fabulous. So now is the game. Uh, you can bring it to a boil, but make sure you don't keep it too long, okay? You wanna reduce a little bit the level of spirit. You wanna evaporate a little bit of the rum, but not entirely, obviously. And you wanna keep that flavor from the rum. So the water from the alcohol is gonna go first, obviously. So the spice rum is gonna be, became more concentrate on a flavor. And it's gonna break through the spices and all mixed together nicely is gonna create a lovely tincture, like kind of a what we did uh, with the nitro press when we infuse quick vodka, but here we're using obviously a hot method, uh, using alcohol and spice to break through, to mix together and create kind of a like, not exactly concentrate, but more strong uh, solution with spices flavor and test uh, but yes yeah, stay around give it a little steer and i will just put it down and pop out to get my special coffee filter because we have to filter this all the spices is ground so you don't want any of these bits going in your syrup you can use paper coffee filter or you can use one like mine which you're gonna see just in a second Okay, I'm back. So this is my uh, kind of, I call it special coffee filter because it's for my coffee maker. But as you can see, and show on this camera as well, as you can see, it's a metal sieve. So first of all, you have very fine sieve inside. Second, on outside, you have even finer sieve. And it's only coming from the bottom. It's a wonderful thing because it's gonna save you a lot of money on buying coffee filters all the time, paper coffee filters. And it's very efficient. However, if you have coffee filters home, just use them. 
because we want to kind of a, as much possible to get away from the spices after once they're mixed with the rom which smells absolutely delicious the rom brings this vanilla which we need vanilla it's expensive so you better get some spice rom with vanilla if you like this flavor but if you want to introduce vanilla to the syrup feel free to get a vanilla paste or vanilla pot if you have fresh obviously Cut in half, take out the seeds from inside the paste, and you're absolutely fine. I use a lot of uh, vanilla paste in work because it's more cheaper and it's fairly efficient and it's full of flavor. Right. Absolutely fantastic. Now, we're moving to the muscovado sugar, light muscovado sugar. This is 150 grams, okay? It's very sticky, very rich, and it's a wonderful for syrups. I do make a dark muscovado sugar syrup because uh, we serve velvet old fashioned in the bar. So this is kind of a bourbon with the Pedro Ximenez sherry and a, a muscovado sugar, dark muscovado sugar syrup. Make it really velvety and really smooth. That's why it's called velvet old fashioned. And it's uh, wonderful because even people who never try whiskey absolutely love it. So as soon as it starts boiling, put the temperature down and simmer for around maybe 10 minutes max. And I'll see you very shortly. Okay, my friends, it's time to switch off everything. Get this noisy stove away. So I'm going to turn off the power. Oh, that's silence. It's perfect. Right. Let's put this book away. Okay, so, as I mentioned, when you are done, put everything away. And just want to give you a quick tip here. There's an option when you don't need to cook the spices with the spirit. But this is a, like a waiting game. So if you want, if you don't want to cook the spirit, if you want to keep at the strength of the spirit for this syrup, Make sure you mix the spices with the rum in a tight jar or bottle or something and leave it on the side and infuse it for a, a good probably couple of days just to extract everything. Uh, it's also option. So you, you can try. Maybe do two batches. Do one with uh, cold extraction and one with the cooked and compare both to see which one it's more to your liking. There's plenty of different ways to do it. However, uh, this is the way how I do this syrup. So. If you want to follow, feel free. If you want to experiment, absolutely be my guest. Okay? So, there you go. We are ready here. Now, last part. When it's cooling down, you remember the orange peels. We don't want to cook them. All we want to do is put inside and leave the orange peel to release the oil while it's cooling down. Okay? So, Leave it for a good half an hour to cool down proper and then fine sieve or like a coffee filter or a metal coffee filter like that or even use a cheesecloth, anything which can stop at least most of the spices used for this syrup and then bottling in the bottle. So I'll leave it to cool down and again I'll see you very shortly. Okay. Final, that was the final cut. So, what you need to do here is obviously fine sieve everything. Uh, you may have a little struggle because obviously you have the orange peels, you have some of the break star anise inside. So if you go directly in your coffee filter, it's gonna be mess and it's gonna be blocked everything. So what I suggest is grab a sieve, put on top of your filter, whatever you're using to do it and You can just strain everything. However, on a first base, again, I'll suggest get all the orange peels out first. As you can see, they're not cooked. They're just enough to release this kind of a lovely orange flavor because the juice we cook inside, it's kind of a loose a little bit of the flavor, of course, because it's just the juice. But here we have the oils from the peels, which when you put them in the hot syrup coming from the stove, it's gonna straight away incorporate and kind of like a extract this oil into the syrup 
but it's not gonna become bitter. None of the bitterness will come. It's just, it's gonna be nice, just a orange, wonderful orange aromas on the nose. That's all you need. Obviously, if you prefer to have a little bit of bitterness, feel free to cook them or maybe squeeze them inside, but my advice is don't do it. Okay, so I'm gonna stop some of the star anise with this sieve first and uh, give my filter, coffee filter, a more breathable space to get the rest of it in. There we go. It's very nice and dark, even we use light muscovado sugar, of course it's gonna be dark because with the whole spice, with the uh, cloves, with everything what we put inside there, all dark spices. You probably wonder why I didn't use cinnamon. Uh, I just never used cinnamon in this syrup. Uh, it's, it's happened that I made it without cinnamon the first time and this is how it's left. Uh, however, if you wanna add cinnamon to the syrup, feel free. It's still lovely winter spice, dark, so it's absolutely fine. Uh, it's gonna take, obviously, some time to go through the filter because it's more thick than uh, just the water. You have the sugar, so it's gonna take a little time. So be patient, give it a time, and when it's ready, all you need to do, look how much, by the way, you see, I, I don't know if you can see it there. Yeah, that's what we catch straight away. So at the moment, for the syrup, all it's left inside is the grounded uh, spices, which they're gonna block a little bit the filter, but it's gonna go there. So once everything is filtered, all you need is to bottle in a bottle, and because you have spirit inside, it will take a longer shelf life in the fridge. Now, it's a very difficult to say how much is the shelf life. Usually, for syrups, it's recommended one to three weeks, depends on the syrup which you're making. But also, it's very important what kind of fridge and temperature you're using. Now, if you remember, if you watch the champagne syrup, which we did a long time ago, it's still absolutely fine in my fridge. My fridge, it's always on five degree, constant temperature, and it's in airtight bottles. So, when I use the syrup, I use quickly, put it back in the fridge, and it's still absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it. However, when I did the banana syrup, the peeled banana syrup went off before the actual sauce white version which we did. So it's quite, you know what I mean, uh, you can actually give a proper date to it. In general, two to maximum three weeks and then discard, okay? But however, make sure you try, make sure you see if it's okay, if it's nothing wrong with the syrup, and you can still use it. But if you don't want to take risk, from one to three weeks, I'll say between two and three weeks is the max for any syrup when it's open and homemade and doesn't use any preservatives uh, apart from the just the natural preservative, the sugar inside. So yeah, my lovely friends, this is all from me. Once more, cheers. Thank you for all new subscribers. I really appreciate it. It's a massive help for the channel. If you just watch this video and find it helpful, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to check Just Shake or Steer. Even Just Shake or Steer at the moment it's on holiday, let's put it this way. I've stopped the channel for a month so I can concentrate a little bit on improving the website and do a few tweaks and plans for the channel. However, it's a lot of content there with the cocktails which you can find and uh, try. I will leave link in the description to the juicers, to the Just Shake or Steer channel, and of course, if you're new, make sure to subscribe and watch some of the oldest videos on Mixology Hacks because it's a lot of interesting information. And I'll see you in two weeks' time. When are we going to make, this time for real, a homemade banana liqueur? So definitely make sure you watch the banana syrup uh, video because some of the techniques we use there and the final results will be used to create a wonderful homemade banana liqueur, okay? And yeah, this is it. Cheers, thank you so much, and I'm looking forward to 2024, make this channel even bigger and bring to you a lots of wonderful and interesting mixology hacks. Bye-bye.